Hello, fellow Wicked Tennis. Less problematic simply died here, and I wanted to share with you guys my favorite part of the year because of the year's coming to an end. Every year, 4Gamer and Famitsu interview a bunch of different developers, and among them is Atlas. Atlas. There's three people that they interview from Atlas. Shinjiro Takada, who represents Studio One. Katsura Hashino, who represents Studio Zero. <laughs> Confusing, I just confused you guys. And Kazuhi Sawada, who represents P-Studio. These kind of go over what they thought about 2020, as well as what to look forward to in 2021. So let's get started. Before we start, I think it's important to say that there's three studios. The Creative Team 1, also known as Maniacs, they work on most games for Atlas. Whether that's Shin Megami Tensei, Trauma Center, or Etrian Odyssey. Whatever is developed internally by Atlas, but isn't a Persona title. P-Studio is the second studio, they're in charge of all the Persona titles. And lastly, there's Studio Zero who, <laughs> until recently, only had zero games under their belt. They developed Catherine Full Body, as well as RE Project Fantasy. For these three studios, we have three representatives. First, let's start with Shinjiro Takada. If you don't know who they are, they worked on the Land Grister games, which is a dead series, by the way, its spiritual successor, Grow Lancer, which is a dead series, by the way, and the Devil Survivor series, which is a dead series, by the way as well as Tokyo Mirage Sessions, aka SMT Cross Fire Emblem, or how character stills floating on a screen for 30 seconds promised me a Project X Zone style crossover with Megaten and Fire Emblem characters in an SRPG, which is also seemingly dead, by the way. First question. Among the games released in 2020, what game impressed or shocked you? Final Fantasy VII Remake. Takata has a pretty nuanced take, I think. Seven is famous as a god game in the Final Fantasy series and still has enthusiastic fans. I think it's a work with a lot of popularity amongst fans, so I think it's very difficult to respond to the expectations. I myself loved the original, so I was looking forward to it even before it was released. And when I played it, I was not only impressed by the beautiful graphics, but also by the careful complementation of the scenario and the new system surroundings, which was more complete than I expected. I did kind of want to clarify because I know that God Game is a little confusing. The term God Game or Kamige is just like a way of saying like a really good game, a game that's considered very popular and well received by general fans. Nocturne is an example of a Kamige for Megaten, for instance. And to further this digression, I decided to look at Nico Video and see what they considered to be Kamige. And the games on that list were pretty crazy to me. We got God of War, we got Patapon, and we got The Sims, among many others, clearly. But those are the ones that I thought, oh, this will be good contrast. And there's also a second term, Kakurera Kamige, which is just a way of saying like a hidden gem, essentially. These kinds of games, when I looked at the same Nico Video website, I found a bunch of games that were listed. And it was weird because they were almost all just like my favorite games. There was like Breath of Fire Dragon Quarter, Dark Cloud, Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles, Zone of the Enders. I was just like, wow, okay. Anyways, back to what I was saying. Next question, the year's most memorable work. Hanzawa Naoki. This is the second season of a Japanese TV drama about a charismatic banker who works for Tokyo Central Bank. Just so you know, because I had no idea. Question three, a person who you personally paid attention to in 2020. Honestly, this kind of annoyed me, but Takata says no one for this statement. Question four, what are your aspirations for 2021 and a message for four gamer readers? We hope to not only release fun games in 2021, but also announce new releases. So please continue to support Atlas. This is a wild response because this guy doesn't just represent Shin Megami Tensei, but he represents a bunch of things. A trauma Center, Etrian Odyssey, like this could be so many things. Devil Survivor 3? Tokyo Mario Session 2? Like what is going to get announced? Maybe we're going to get more remasters? I don't know. It's just crazy. And this is like the most exciting part of the thing for me so far. Now to the Famitsu section. His 2021 keywords are originality and ingenuity. His 2021 aspirations are, although various difficulties occur during development, we will continue to pursue the highest quality by flexibly responding with ingenuity. And I hope that as many customers as possible will enjoy it. This is a very interesting statement. It's like he's talking about Nocturne HD and how it was received in Asia. Yeah. Lastly, what to look for in 2021. We are paying close attention to the new hardware that were announced one after the other. However, the essential hardware is not available at this time. So I think this thing ties into the other things he mentioned in 4Gamer. So we know for sure we're getting something other than Shin Megami Tensei 5 next year. Now to Katsura Hashino. I want to bring up some of his work. He worked on Persona 3, 4, and 5, Catherine, and Nocturne. Yeah, I bet you didn't see that coming. He also worked on Double Summoner, Soul Hackers, If, Machin, The First Trauma Center, just anyway. 
Question 1. The most impressive or shocking title released in 2020. Ghost of Tsushima. I haven't had time to play for a long time, but I was impressed by the fresh worldview and the tailoring that makes use of know-how. I don't have a lot to say about this, but I enjoyed his choice. Question 2. The most memorable work of entertainment content released in 2020. This was a year I was much too busy to spend on entertainment. In addition, various things have been postponed, so... I'm looking forward to EVA and Ultraman over the years, and I have to see Demon Slayer. I feel like Hashino has a pretty close to a traditional longtime Megaten fan taste in media, so I like his stance, though I can't say that I'll ever watch Demon Slayer. Question 3. A person who, personally, you paid attention to in 2020. Yuki Tsunoda, a race driver. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what to say. What are your aspirations for 2021 and a message to the four gamer readers? With the new corona from last year, the world is changing in a hurry and all we can do is to continue working quietly. I'm still working on an Atlas style fantasy RPG. The title is also in a good place, so I would like to do my best to provide interesting gameplay to the world while facing it straight on. I feel like I say this every year, but please look forward to RE Project Fantasy and we will try to challenge ourselves to make it good. His key ways for 2021 is quiet. His aspirations are, with the new corona from last year, the world is changing in a hurry, and all we can do is to continue working quietly. The titles under development are also in the climax, so I would like to do my best to provide interesting gameplay to the world while facing it straight away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Hashino is pretty good at consistently repeating the same sort of rehearsed statements, by the way. Updates. I would like to announce the title under development as soon as possible. Please look forward to it. What to look for in 2021? The second year of the corona wreck. We're also paying attention to how changes in life, such as remote work, will take root from the perspective of homeostasis. We are also looking forward to the success of movies such as Eva and Ultraman and the racing driver, Tsunoda. Yeah, Hashino's pretty good at consistently repeating the same sort of rehearsed statements, by the way. And the final Atlas statements to look at are from Kazuhisa Wada. Wada is a guy with less renown than the others listed, but it's because he's now coming into his own. Wada has been with Atlas since the late 90s, but his notable works include Persona 4 Dancing, the best of the three Persona Dancing games, by the way, Persona 4 Arena, Persona 4 Arena Ultimax, and quite a few other Mega Ten, including Devil Children, Avachu, and Nocturne. So, question one. Of all the games released in 2020, what was the most impressing or shocking? Cyberpunk 2077. It makes me think of various things. It has been a long time since multi-platform development and simultaneous worldwide release has been an optimal solution for maximization, but the goal is not so easy. And the balance with time spent is also very important. There's a gap somewhere and you have to fill it with something. While thinking about it, the game is amazingly crafted and I like the world. It's just a system that you have to hold firmly to play. Since I have the PS4 version, there are various flaws, but I'm entertained. I like this new Nuance take, and I appreciate Wada taking the flaws in stride and considering the game development in an empathetic way that only a game developer would understand. And also, he should have just bought it on PC like me. <laughs> Question 2 The most renowned piece of entertainment content released in 2020. This wasn't released this year, but Darren Brown, The Push a Netflix reality show. So this show is a, basically a social experiment. In this show, they create tense situations in a limited space and time and develop bold social experiments. But it's very interesting that people's judgments and actions are broken. And I'm scared. Wada is a surprise. <laughs> it's like he's studying for Persona 6 or something. I haven't seen this show, but it looks like 2015 YouTube in a nutshell. <laughs> A person who you personally paid attention to in 2020. Donald Trump. Beginning with the corona-related performances, the presidential election was no longer entertaining. And what, is this the end? Uh, maybe it's not over yet. Okay, Wada well, really piqued my interest with that. It's interesting to think that a Japanese game developer would be paying attention so closely to United States politics. Question four, what are your aspirations for 2021 and a message to four gamer readers? 2020 was a completely unpredictable year for such a world. I feel that it is universally important to see the opposite in the midst of sudden changes where we do not know what will happen. In 2021, Corona will not be swept away or moved. I want to calmly identify what I should do and what I can do to push forward. And 2021 will be the 25th anniversary of the Persona series. We are looking for various measures to get everyone excited, so please look forward to it. Dude, Wada is hinting at presumably amazing Persona anniversary festivities. Please, Alice, if you guys are watching this, I want to be a part of the Persona <laughs> museum or whatever you're gonna do, please. <laughs> Let me... <laughs> Wada's keywords, carrying out original intention, 2021 aspiration, 2020 was an unpredictable one with even greater impact during the transformational period. It is universally important to emerge in a sudden change where you do not know what will happen. In 2021, I would like to calmly identify what I should do and push forward without being disturbed. That sounds really familiar. <laughs> Updates. The project is working quietly. Thanks to you, this is the 25th anniversary of the Persona series. We are thinking of great measures to get everyone excited, so please look forward to it. This, again, sounds very familiar. <laughs> 
<laughs> what to look for in 2021? So this has me so excited because he's been hyping up Persona so far. So let's see what he says. Toyota Woven City Project. Toyota's Woven City Project. It's still a long way to go, but this kind of experimental city planning will, will fall in the middle of a dream, but I hope it will succeed little by little. Is this the day when the future city will cease to be science fiction? What the heck, Wada? You were winning. What is this? <laughs> what is, what? Well, if you don't know, Woven City is like a fully connected ecosystem powered by hydrogen fuel cells planned to be built by Toyota in Japan near Mount Fuji. It's envisioned as a living laboratory. The Woven City will serve as a home to full-time residents and researchers who will be able to test and develop technologies such as autonomy, robotics, personal mobility, smart homes, and artificial intelligence in a real-world environment. Well, that's all very interesting, but that's not video games. <laughs> Why are you caring about the future? Care about video games. <laughs> and that's all they had to say this year. For me, it was pretty exciting because they mentioned a lot of little tiny bits of information. Whether it's the Persona 25th anniversary celebration festivities or the hinting that there's going to be more games besides Shin Megami Tensei V and RE Project Fantasy in our midst. So it's nice to kind of just see who they are and what they're interested in and what their year was like. <laughs> All that being said, the thing that excites me most is to know that RE Project Fantasy will be getting an announcement sometime this year, and that we're going to be getting more announcements that are games that aren't Shin Megami Tensei V and RE Project Fantasy. We got plural, so that means that it could be anything. My thoughts are that it could potentially be Nocturne HD Remaster being announced for the Steam, for Steam, or it could be announcements for other HD remasters, or it could just be some new content, which I also would be looking forward to because new content is new and i gotta say thank you guys all for watching me this whole entire year not just this video but any other video you've seen this year i've grown this channel quite a bit and it's really just thanks to you guys and the growth isn't just in this channel it's also on my twitter and on twitch it's so refreshing and interesting that you guys are interested in seeing what i have to say about anything really and also to see me play the automaton or karaoke on twitch it's just I just, I don't know. Thank you guys so much. This year has been really good for me. I got to experience things that I would have never experienced otherwise, despite the fact that Corona had hit. And just stay safe. Have a good rest of this year, and goodbye, fellow Megatennists.